penguins. Could penguins possibly be the most powerful creature on this planet? No, because they can't walk properly. What penguins can do though is fly. Uh, oh no, wait, that's not right. What penguins can do though is swim. Many times I have attempted to take over the world by conquering the land in Spore, but I have been a fool. Why have I been wasting my time on land when 71% of the planet is water? Well, I watched Happy Feet 2 recently, and gosh darn it, I was impressed. I shall create my own army of penguins, and this time, all 100% of the planet will be mine. Without further ado then, let's jump straight in to the 2008 live simulation game, Spore. Now, when I imagined the species that would take over the world, what I didn't imagine was this. There was so much wrong with my initial penguin design. For example, the mouth. Just because I'm making a penguin doesn't mean I'm trying to make Pingu. I don't want to be marching into battle just hearing... Some drastic changes needed to be made. Thankfully, I knew just what to do. And, before long, Peter the Penguin was created. <clears throat> okay, this, this is the bit where I do the backstory. Peter had always had one dream. To sail the seven seas on his very own pirate ship. He wanted to scourge every body of water available to him. Yes, one day the entire ocean would be his. Then, as he gazed out upon the big blue horizon, something occurred to him. Who actually owned the ocean? What was stopping him just swimming out and claiming it as his own? In fact, he would do just that. He ran down the beach, into the ocean, and began to swim out as far as he could. This was going to be easy. The ocean would be his in no time. Oh my god, what is that? Oh my god, no! And that's where Peter's story ended, unfortunately, guys. N no, just kidding. As it turned out, the ocean was currently inhabited by a large sea monster. Peter was not yet powerful enough to take on such an enemy. For now then, if he couldn't be the greatest pirate on the seven seas, he would at least try to be the greatest pirate on the beach. With this in mind, Peter began to run up and down the shoreline, searching for places to do piratey things, such as burning, and pillaging, and downloading TV shows for free. Before long, he came across a small community of shrimps. This was perfect, and he began to ransack the shrimps for all that they were worth. Mmm, tasty, thought Peter. And as it turned out, the shrimps weren't the only creatures around. There was a group of catfish as well. More protein for Peter. And then, there was a nest of puffins. What? Uh, Peter was not happy about this. For all he knew, puffins were just a bunch of penguin wannabes. He would not stand for these no-good impersonators on his beach. Peter launched into an attack, but the puffins outnumbered him, and he had to make a tactical retreat. What followed was a rather intense chase scene, but in the end, he managed to get away, and he returned home to find a strange shell had appeared at the penguin's base. Weird, but Peter thought nothing of it, and he treated it as another free protein meal. This gave him the extra bit of strength he needed, and after teaming up with one of his best friends, Percy the Penguin, they headed back to the Puffin's Nest and showed them who was boss. With the beach now well and truly his, Peter was feeling ready to spread his wings further afield. Of course, he still wouldn't be able to fly or anything, but maybe it was finally time for Peter to venture out into the ocean and conquer it once and for all. Oh god, no. Okay, maybe it was still a bit too early, actually. Instead, Peter decided he would work his way up bit by bit, and he set out to find a smaller body of water more befitting of his current stature. He and Percy travelled far, raiding more puffins as they went. They saw many peculiar sights, the skeleton of a huge creature from times gone by, another nest of penguins that greeted them warmly, and then another peculiar shell, just like the one from before, except this one was bobbing up and down on the horizon. Oh no, it couldn't be. Peter was in trouble. He had just run straight into a giant whelk. The whelk snarled at them with a menacing grimace, and then, in a flash, it was darting straight towards them. Peter ran as fast as his little flippers would carry him, but the whelk was gaining on them. It was going to catch them. That's when Percy turned around and made the ultimate sacrifice. He faced the whelk head on. 
buying Peter just enough time to be able to escape unscathed. With the devastating passing of his one and only friend, Peter had almost forgotten about his grudge match with the sea monster. His new nemesis was the giant Welk, and he knew exactly what he had to do to defeat him. Peter was going to assemble the greatest pirate crew there had ever been. He would search heaven and earth for the most fearless and brutal warriors around, and with a renewed sense of purpose, he set out again on another journey. He hadn't been travelling long, however, before he began to hear the pattering of footsteps behind him. He turned around, and to his surprise, he was being followed by a small, adorable elephant. Peter was not in the mood. This elephant was far too cute, and he ignored it and kept on moving. But the elephant seemed to be following him wherever he went. After walking for quite some time with the elephant shadowing his every step, he came across the thing he'd been looking for all this time. A little pool of water, just the right size for a small penguin like him. The elephant had been escorting him here. Peter thanked him with all his heart, and invited him to be the first member of his pirate crew. Together, they pronounced this small bit of water as their very first piece of ocean, and they took the time to have a good splash about before moving onwards. As the day wore on, the good fortune did not end there, as, just a short journey away from Peter's new pond, he stumbled across some of the perfect candidates to be his second crewmate. It was a bunch of trout. Peter made friends with the trout by singing them one of his favourite sea shanties, and with the help of the small elephant trumpeting away in the back, the bravest trout of them all, a fish named Timothy, was nominated to join their pirate crew. Together, the three of them felt unstoppable, and the rest of Creature Stage was a breeze. They went around the place beating up puffins and singing sea shanties without a care in the world. The crew discovered bigger and bigger bits of water, they encountered monkeys, tiny men, and bears, who they couldn't stay around for too long as they were licking their lips in Timothy Trout's direction. Time flew by, and eventually, Peter was trying on his new sailor's hat, which indicated he was more than ready to move into tribal stage. The penguins built themselves a village, and the small elephant took up its position as town guard. To find the group a fitting meal for their first night in the village, Peter had taken himself out on a fishing trip. As he was scouting out the local shoreline, and thinking about the process of designing his very first pirate ship, what he discovered on his travels was nothing short of catastrophic. A whole tribe of whelks had moved into the area, and, as if this situation couldn't get any worse, they were being overseen by the giant whelk himself. Peter sprinted back to base and alerted the other penguins, they immediately set about weaponizing themselves with pointed spears. As they did so though, it occurred to Peter that an all-out battle was not necessarily the pirate's way. No, no. Instead, he would devise a cunning plan. He himself would approach the Welks alone. He would sneak behind enemy ranks and steal all of their food supplies. And it was whilst the Welks were weakened by hunger that the penguins would make their move. Putting his plan into action, Peter circumnavigated the Welk settlement, making sure to be as sneaky as possible. However, when he reached the food supplies, the Welks turned around all at once, and he was caught red flippered. In a flash, he was pinned down by their sharp jaws. But, against all the odds, during the following chase, he managed somehow to give them the slip. Inspired by Peter's stealth and dexterity, the rest of the Penguin Village wanted to give thievery a try. Soon, the Welks found themselves fighting against a constant stream of penguin robbers. In fact, the penguins were smuggling so much food, that even the giant Welk was beginning to pay attention, and he ordered his Welk mercenaries to launch into a counter-attack. With every one of the penguins so preoccupied by the thrill of the heist, the Welks essentially had a free shot at the penguins' base. But, as reliable as ever, the small elephant defended the penguin settlement with all his might keeping the Welks at bay almost long enough for Peter to return. His effort was nothing short of heroic. But, in the end, the Welks were too much. And, in a tragic turn of events, the small elephant was defeated. With a burst of anger and rage, Peter and the Penguins returned to the scene with a vengeance. The Welks would pay for what they had done. 
Peter swore revenge on every single one of them, from normal size to giant. The small elephant may have returned to the heavenly realm from which he came, but down here on Earth there was a score to settle. Right here, and right now. The pirate penguin armada flooded across the battlefield, like a wave on which they one day dreamed to sail. They took out whelk after whelk in an arduous brawl. And, after the final whelk had fallen, they burnt their town hall to nothing but ash and dust. The giant whelk was furious, and the penguins had to run for their little penguin lives once more. Normal sized whelks were one thing, but this titanous sea snail was going to be a whole different prospect. Despite this though, Peter was determined to avenge the passing of his adorable little friend, and he still had one card left to play. He ordered the penguins on an emergency fishing mission. The crew was confused. Fishing? At a crucial time such as this? But what happened next would leave them all stunned. For Peter had experience with a foe even more fearsome than the giant whelk. And, as they often say in the penguin community, yesterday's enemy is tomorrow's friend. It's a common saying amongst penguins, just, just trust me on that. Peter and the penguins looked out towards the ocean, and began to sing their famous sea shanties one final time. From somewhere deep below the surface, who else but the huge sea monster answered their call. The great green beast swished his tail, flinging water high into the air, and a barrage of strange fish rained down upon the penguin crew. They took the fish home, and served up a great banquet, a feast for the ages. And upon eating these magical fish, the penguins were granted unbelievable strength. It was now or never. They grabbed their spears, formed ranks once more, and with the will of the great sea monster driving them onwards, and thoughts of the small elephant in their hearts, they faced the giant whelk head on. The whelk was as tough as ever, but Peter and his crew were prepared. They attempted to confuse the whelk by making quick darts from side to side, taking advantage of its poor maneuverability. Eventually, after a huge effort, and many, many spears thrown, the whelk could take it no more, and it fell to the ground with an earth-shattering thud. The penguins were victorious, and, with nothing else standing in his way, Peter's dream now seemed more possible than ever. He was able to finish designing his very own pirate ship. And, before he knew it, it was floating on the ocean and ready to set sail. It cut through the waves like a knife through butter. Peter felt the wind ruffling his feathers, and his maiden voyage was everything he had ever hoped for. Here, on his ship, he finally felt at home, and they sailed onwards for days and days and days. In time, they sailed so far that the ocean around them turned from blue to green. What? Something wasn't right here. A sinister presence started to surround them, and it was only a few moments before they found out why. No, but they had defeated it. How could it be here now? Unless there was more than one giant whelk. And so the story ends. Peter's ship never did return from its first adventure. But it's not all doom and gloom. For those few who know the Seven Seas best, often tell tales of a mysterious ghost ship passing by every now and then. Filled to the brim with pirates treasure, and manned by a crew of penguins. <laughs>